third law of motion. As Brother Matt pushes on Brother Matt, Brother Matt pushes back on Brother Matt. This is what we call equal and opposite Brother Matts. <laughs> Well, that was silly. In all serious now, here's Newton's third law of motion. Whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first. It's simple to say, but maybe it's a new way of thinking about things. So let's see if you can't answer this question. A soccer player kicks a ball with 1,500 newtons of force. The ball exerts a reaction force against the player's foot of some at less than 1,500 newtons or 1,500 newtons, some at more than 1,500 newtons, or none of the above. Pause the video to select your answer. And your answer was, naturally, 1,500 newtons. Action and reaction forces. Or, or, is, it, or is it action and reaction forces. How do you know which force is which? Is the force from my right hand the action force and the force from my left hand the reaction force? Or, or is it the force from my left hand that's the action force and the force from my right hand that's the reaction force? It doesn't matter actually which force we call the action force and which force we call the reaction force when you have an interaction. The important point is that the two forces are co-pairs of a single interaction. When I press my hands together, that's the single interaction. And either force could be the action force, and either force could be the reaction force. It just depends on our point of view. When I push my hands together, there are two forces at play. Neither one will exist without the other. I can't push my fingers up anymore without the other hand pushing against the right hand. The two forces are equal in strength, opposite in direction, and they always act on different objects. It's my right hand pushing on my left hand, and my left hand pushing on my right hand. And now, Brother Matt has an example. Hi kids, we're going to do another physics experiment. Here I've got a lemon. I'm going to roll it into the wall, and let's see what happens. What happened there? Let's explain what just happened using Newton's third law. The lemon runs into the wall, exerting a force onto the wall. The wall exerts a force back onto the lemon in the equal and opposite direction. This is what we call the reaction force. Now let's take a banana and see what happens when you roll a banana into the wall. <laughs> oh, hmm. Okay, forget the banana. Excuse me. Let's talk about cars. Have you ever noticed that a car's tires push against the road in the direction that's opposite to the direction of the car's motion? Go take a look at a car. Look at your parents' car, look at your own car, and notice how the tires roll. Or think of the way that you walk. Your foot pushes backwards against the ground, but you move forwards. If you're uh, a track athlete and you're a sprinter, push back against the blocks when you sprint from the start, but then you move forwards. What's going on here? Here's another way of stating Newton's third law. To every action, there is always an opposed equal reaction. So, um, when your car moves, the tires of the car push back against the road, and it's the road that pushes the tires forward. When you walk and your feet push backwards against the ground, it's the ground that's pushing forwards to move you forwards. Confusing? Well, if so, here's a simple rule that will help you identify an action and reaction pair of forces. Simply identify the interaction, okay? So for example, when you have the lemon crashing into the wall, the crash into the wall, that crash is the interaction. And you have two forces. 
The wall interacts with the lemon and vice versa. The wall exerts a force on the lemon which redirects its motion and the lemon exerts a force on the wall. Here's another example. Let's say I ask you, how does a rocket fly? Well, identify the interaction. There is an interaction between the rocket and the gas that fuels it. The rocket will exert a force on the gas, it pushes on the gas, and the gas exerts a force on the rocket. The gas pushes on the rocket, which moves the uh, rocket forward. Notice how the rocket is pushing the gas backwards in order to move forwards. That's physics. To every action, there is always an opposed equal reaction. And I think you are ready for a couple more check questions. When you step off a curb, the earth pulls you downward. The reaction to this force is slight air resistance, not existent in this case, you pulling the earth upward, or none of the above. Pause the video now to find out. Believe it or not, when you step off a curb and the earth pulls you downward, you actually pull the earth upward. You exert a force on the earth itself. Why do you not sense the earth moving upward toward you? Good question. Is the earth fixed so it cannot move? Is it that the earth can move but other objects on it prevent it from moving? Is it that it moves but a very small amount that you cannot see? Or none of the above? Pause the video now to choose your answer. If you chose C, you are correct. The earth does move, but just a very small amount that you cannot see. Actually, when the lemon crashes into the wall, it actually moves the wall a slight amount too, but such a very small amount that you can't see it. Why can't you see it? Well, that answer has to do with inertia. The mass of the earth is so great compared to the mass of uh, yourself when you step off the curb that the earth doesn't move a whole lot. It doesn't respond very much to that force you're exerting on the earth. Its mass is so incredibly great, it resists motion a great deal more than you do. Same case with the lemon and the wall. The lemon's mass is very small compared to the mass of the wall. So even though the lemon exerts a force on the wall, the wall doesn't want to move very much. It's very massive. It has a lot more inertia than the lemon does. Newton's third law of motion. 